Welcome back to the time I got reincarnated as a slime. Anime review episode number seven. Correct? Yeah, seven. Excuse me. Unlike last time I covered, excuse me, four episodes. This time I covered only two again. Yes. And the two episodes I'm covering are called The Demon Lord Melum Attacks. That's episode 16, and 17 is The Gathering. These two episodes roughly cover the prelude and pretty much mostly the first four chapters of book three for the series. Now, episode 16 begins two days after the events of last episode, where the, the, the Dwarf King has gone home, but he come back, and it's the Foreign Minister. Vesta. Yep. He decides, though, we should not basically just want to do nothing. So, I work for you. Become a scientist. And he does. And of course, Keijin basically says he'll take full responsibility. Which, okay, perfectly fine. So, they set him up in the ceiling cave along with the lizard men, who also have joined forces with Rimuru. And the sister of. of, well, the, the daughter of the chieftain. Whose name is Sakua. Yes. Yeah. Named her and her, her subordinates. And then of course. For some reason. Because of the fact he was in the middle of a naming ceremony. Gaburu. Apparently got named again. So. Like. And they evolved from Lizardmen to Dragonutes. Though in the case of several and her subordinates. They, they, they basically develop a human like appearance. While in the case of Gabatu. He developed a more of a dragon-like appearance. And the, the former lizard men now live in the ceiling cave, de developing the stuff for the herbs. And also, Vesta gets his own lab in the cave. Yes, a lab. Which looks like one of the Monday labs, which I'm thinking, you know, like, okay, he, they, they must have the technology from the Dwarf Kingdom. Because it seems to me like, like above on the ceiling, it looks like an air vent. Yes, which, given the level of technology this world has, I highly doubt that you have the equipment to make that damn thing. I get the middle door. That's why I'm probably simple for them to make, but... An air vent? Wow. That looks like modern scientific equipment. And what's his job doing? Making potions. Yes. Basically, they're trying to duplicate Rimuru's potion, except that Rimuru's is more of a 99% chance of success... While theirs is over 98, 98% chance. Remaru probably thinks, though, okay, this makes sense. Maybe, maybe make it mass through some. Uh, not necessarily. Basically, do, do the small type potions, and, and of course, they decide to get the formula from Dwarf King, and that's it. For that part. Yeah, pretty interesting part there. And this happens over the course of a couple episodes. Now, as in the case of the Demon Lords, yes, we actually have several show up in this episode. Mm hmm. Now, Clayman did technically appear three episodes prior to this, but the other ones, which are Mim, Neva, Charon, and Frey. Mim, Neva has actually become a sort of a an ally. Yeah, and of course they talk about the orc, the orc disaster, which which was invented. By the way, first time I see Miram, you actually see her from her backside, and you see nearly most of her rear end because of the outfit she's wearing. And then they decided to cancel the non-aggression pack with, well, because the dragon is not there, so they canceled it. But they all agreed not to interfere with ancient affairs, which the clay man basically easily agrees to that. So the very just flies off, and then of course Rimuru notices basically goes out to the very same hill that they keep going to like almost every episode. The hill that just just right near the city, <coughs> right near the city, uh, uh, Rimuru. And there's Miriam. Oh, by the way, he does basically, uh, because the fact that Ramiru is kind of a pervert, he does in a way see, he also, when he first meets her, he has a tendency to stare at her chest. And of course, he does eventually transform his human form. And of course, his Keijin tried to help him out. Of course, Ragat does too. But he's like, no, no, I'll handle this. And 
he beats her, but if she he if if she beats him, he becomes her subordinate. But she gets to stop. So how does he beat her? You're probably thinking, how the heck does she do that? How's how does Rimuru beat a beautiful demon lord like Miram? I this magical power here have it. Face fire right in her face. What did he give her? Honey! Yes! He beats her with honey! Now, not like whipping her with honey, just having her eat that. And of course, she just stops doing it. Of course, she just becomes a guest and then becomes a resident. Oh, yeah, because of a bestie of, <laughs> of Remru. And then later on, of course, they do cut this out here where they mention, oh, yeah, let's give her the guest room, not the one on the western side. Let's give her like one of the futons. And here's the strange thing, though. Apparently, Remru lives in a Japanese-style mansion. And I'm thinking, though, like, okay, the Kijin probably have no idea what the heck this style is anyway, because it's never brought up in the anime. Because let me see. Remru, Miram, and the two Kijin girls. Uh, they are... Shuna and Sion. And... Sion was the one basically who actually helped fight the Demon Lord four, and they're just relaxing there. Rimu just gets out, and then of course <laughs> they had Rimu decides to have a splash party with them, and you have yeah Rimu talking to the guys like okay they know who she is, and having their side definitely is a good thing, but it might end for the other Demon Lords, but it's okay for now. Oh by the way, when she first arrives in town. The first thing she does, because of the fact that Gabriel 2 decided to insult her by calling her a runt, she punches him. And just, oh, I'm not going to cause any trouble. Say so he insulted me. Like, okay, fine, just don't do any more of this. It's like, fine. And then, of course, like, after staying there for a while, and of course, then the episode ends up having the Cabal Party work with the Guildmaster to investigate this particular city because basically humans are. Let's just say are taking notice of Remuru's new country. By the way, the Dwarf King, aside from the brief appearance at the beginning of the episode, he's never seen again for the rest of 16 and even 17. Meanwhile, though, a group of humans, a group of mercenaries, though in the book they were criminals, they go to the they basically are running what they basically deal with a spider. But look how Gabato shows up and deals with a spider, of course, I celebrate it anyways. But before these guys show up, we actually have a beast man show up. Yes, in the very next episode. His name is Fibo. And of course you have Rainbow just relaxing because so that's the whole thing with the lab thing comes in. And he's like, what's going on in the city? And he gets there and it turns out like we see that Raker has been injured. Like his face has been immediately melted off by fire. Look at Rainbow gives a potion. But the thing is, Miram actually says, okay, I did not harm anybody. I harmed him because he harmed your your subordinate. And Rimuru does like the fact that she did this per se. Okay, your punishment, take away your lunch. But she gets lunch anyways. <laughs> because you defended somebody, basically. And then, of course, like, then they, of course, decide to sail down. And it's just so hilarious. The fact that, well, that, and, because they think, oh, so, like, a, a measly slime's coming in, like, and, of course, everybody's all defending him. And, of course, you have Mira spilling the beans about, later after they leave, about defending, about making a puppet demon lord. She even suggested to him when they first meet, but him becoming a demon lord is like, nah, I'm not interested. Well, I ran a line, he, I'll get to that later, I'm not going to spoil it here. Then the humans show up, and they mention, oh, yeah, we actually... Not only defeating the Orc Lord, but we also gonna mention about the whole thing about the Orc Lord being beaten. But of course, the the guy who appears in the episode, leader of the criminals. Excuse me. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Uh, Miriam is no longer wearing her attire she debuted in. She actually is wearing a schoolgirl outfit. Yes, for some reason, remember to put her in a schoolgirl outfit. Yeah, appearance wise, she reminds me a lot. Of some P characters I've seen from some anime. Like I'm trying to think here. Like reminds me of like. Uh, I'm trying to think. I mean her temper reminds me of Eris. From Shuka Tension obviously. 
But appearance-wise, the pink hair... Uh... I'm not really sure. I've seen I've seen this type of character before in some of the anime. I just don't remember the name of the anime. But if anyone can remember the name of the anime for a, a pink haired girl who's got a big temper. Oh wait. I do remember seeing a character like this where the character's very similar appearance except the hair color different. It was um one of those blonde twins from Meow Love. This character reminds me a lot of that character. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, not sure why Remember put her in the schoolgirl outfit. Yeah, it, has anybody noticed that when he watches the series, that a lot of the characters are wearing, like, modern-day clothing? Like, Sweeney was wearing, like, a businesswoman's suit. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, Ben and Maro, I think he's dressed, like, basically like, like a modern-day... Well, he looks like something out of, like, the 19th century with the way he dresses. But everybody else looks like they're, like, modern 21st century Though in the case of Miriam, basically, schoolgirl, obviously. Yep. So, of course, they bring up the fact their alliance with the Dwarven Kingdom, of course, they initially, until Vesta comes and goes like, oh, oh, it's a minister. Four minister. Because he basically goes moved because of his corrupt practices. And they confirm a lot of the stuff. And, of course, the criminal who's there, he is asked to, take, to basically be a stand-in for him. And his name is Yodam. Yes. They ask him he asked him to be his champion and to stand in for him to be the public figure who defeated the Oracle Lord, which seems pretty simple for him. And he agrees to it, no problem. As for supporters, who the heck knows? Interesting though the fact that the Cavo Party don't really do anything at all. Aside from the fact they briefly show up in episode sixteen here, they only get you know, like they briefly show up right next episode. I think they show up uh, for episode seventeen they get like one or two lines, but that's it. Now, when they show up in episode 16, that was technically the first appearance of episode 8. That was the last and physically appeared in the series. And here they return 8 episodes later. Yep. But two really good episodes, and I can't wait to discuss next three, which I'll discuss those tomorrow. And probably do some comic corners too on that. Probably at least two of them. Yep. Oh, in case you're curious though, I like today, which I had one new anime, which was that kind of Titan. Tomorrow and Wednesday, no. None I could think of, no. But do expect tomorrow for reviews for this. And, of course, uh, Comic Corners. So basically, next episode of this one tomorrow. And it hopefully at least a couple Comic Corners. And that'd be pretty much it, okay? So yeah, so that's it for Sick Love You. And that's definitely going to be a video stick because I don't have any more time to do. Oh, before I close out here. Uh, Miriam's voice actor. Oh, I almost forgot to mention about the ending of episode 12. Well, Clayman is sending out a one of his supporters named Tyr, who, by the way, is voiced by Monica Rail. Yep. Where investigate this creature known as a Carbados, which they probably do, I think they do play a role in in the show itself, which should be quite interesting to say the least, because they tease him at the end of this episode. Hmm? Now, who voices the Air Demons? Uh, Clayman is voiced by John Bergmer. Uh, Miriam herself is voiced by... Uh, Kristen... Kristen McGuire. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's who voices her. Oh, and by the way, she is... Apparently, Clifford Champion's partner. Like, apparently they're dating. I'm like, okay. So the voice of Bakudo was dating her? Okay. Okay, so apparently they're engaged. Yes, they're engaged. Which, that's interesting. Now, have I seen any other series of her in it besides this one? I'm looking right now. She was in How Another Seven Demon Lord. That's interesting. She's Riri from... Dr. Stone. She's a fire force as you. Can I summer love as war as Erica Kos? She's Helene. Oh yeah, I remember this character from Commence Space One with the one revealing outfit. She's also Tina from Banish the Hero Party. And that's it. She's not been acting very long. No. 
Uh, she's only been acting since like 2013. Oh, she was also the voice of Sonico from How Fox Sonico Son. Okay, okay, interesting. I like that character, Sonico Son. It's just so funny. So basically, a small handful of series for her. Mm hmm. But yeah. Definitely looking forward to. Oh, and Miriam herself is a dragon head. Yep. But yeah. Okay, just a minute. But that's pretty much it for this particular view. But yeah, I had to bring that up because, well, that's basically happening. Okay, so see you tomorrow. Bye.